Hello everybody, it's the Alco Diesel Guy, and I'm getting back into end skill after a long period of not being in the part of the hobby, close to 10 years now. Basically, I decided to dust off the old equipment and start get thing, getting things going. Shout out to Ch Trains with Shane, he really got me into it, and I started seeing those little cool little models rolling around in his layout and him doing the work on it. That really kind of motivated me for dusting these things off. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. The subject for this video, as you can probably guess, is going to deal with N scale, and then really it can be applied to HO scale as well. We have here a pretty desirable engine. It's an Amtrak 8 engine. These are pretty hard to come by. They were only built for so long by Atlas, and they pretty much sold out. There are a couple of different runs. This is an earlier run with the old lens decoder in it. And keep this in mind because it's going to play a big role in this particular video. So, what I'd like to do today, of course, like anybody naturally, when they get one of these engines, this is new old stock, is to program this. I have in front of me a Digitrack Zephyr. This is an original one, a DCS-50. This dates back to around 2006, seven or something like that. I've had this for quite some time. It actually failed on me at one point, and I had to put a power supply in it. And the blinking actually is not ref just refreshed. This display on itself is actually on its way out. This device is admittedly on its way out and not in the greatest shape, but it does still work, and I'm kind of getting my money's worth out of it. I upgraded to a newer Zephyr, and long story short, Power supply blew out on this one, and it was just cheaper to upgrade. I'd actually gotten it, as it turns out, as a Christmas present, making it really cheap to upgrade. Thanks, Mom and Dad. This is, again, like more than 10 years ago already, so that's how long ago it was. And this kind of just sat in storage until more recently when I needed something to program these engines. My other workbench is kind of crowded with HO scale proje projects, and I figured, hey, why not put this into service? I got a good deal on a power supply and got it up and running. All that said, let's get let's go get on with getting this locomotive working here. This is a dash eight. Gonna put this on the track. Actually, try to get both of them in the shot here. Now, again with the digi tracks, I'll go through the programming method. I'm gonna use the direct programming mode, which will allow me to program on the program track. Okay, and it's a fairly straight procedure. Basically, I've got, as you see, I have this now on the programming track. I'm going to go into the program mode, choose direct programming because I have this on a program track. The number for this engine is 514, so let me go ahead and get that up here. Four-digit addressing, because you need to use that even for three digits. Five, one, four. And I'm going to go ahead and try to write to it. And uh-oh, I got an error. Now, a lot of you are probably fr would freak out when you see this and say, oh my God, my DCC system, aka my Digitrack Zephyr is malfunctioning. As I mentioned, this is on its way out. Or, oh my God, my decoder, my locomotive is shot because this error means the system can't talk to the locomotive. It isn't, it isn't able to communicate with it. Well, actually, you'd be wrong if you think those things. Luckily, the problem has to do with these older decoders. As I mentioned before, this has the older style lens decoder, as again displayed by the box right here. It is decoder equipped, though. Now, this decoder is not faulty. It's just, well, older. And that said, it's manufactured on what's called a higher pro size process, measured in nanometers. Basically, in English, this basically means that the internal chips that are manufactured on this particular engine are larger and therefore need more power to function. The NMRA specifications never seem to conceive this. For some reason or other, the N-scale engines wind up with higher specifications, although the lens decoders may have had this problem because they're such high quality. Anywho, because of this fact, the standard program voltage, which this is actually set to from the factory, will not handle this particular decoder. It just won't work. So what is one to do, I mean? Well, there are a couple of different ways of handling this. You could go and add a programming booster to these particular units. It is available, but not on the Digitrack Zephyr. This has a pretty interesting party piece, a.k.a. Wildcar, a.k.a. secretly hidden, hidden, uh, shall we say, special feature, as I try to put that in air quotes, that will allow it, basically, to program this locomotive by simply punching in a code. This particular mode is called burst mode, and basically, like its name implies, it allows the system to put more power out to the actual programming track, pretty much as much as you would get on the main line. 
as opposed to the limited specification programming voltage that the NMRA uh, specified, I should say, for this particular pr type of programming of a locomotive in any scale. So how do we get into it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We just need to close, in the case of the Digitrack Zephyr, switch number seven. One note on programming these particular decoders. Always make sure you get the following message when you do your command. Again, that's probe switch 7. And again, C to close. When you exit, you should always get the following message on the screen. The CS, which means the system has physically closed the switch. So now we're in burst or blast mode, as I found it is actually referred to as. We're going to go ahead now and program our locomotive. Now again, remember, both tracks are technically going to function as programming tracks, so make sure that if you have an engine on the main line, you remove it. So let's go back into this again. I'm going to go into Program, Direct Program, Locom, choose Address Spore, 514, and I'm going to write, and then I'm going to press CRW. And now it flashes and programs as it should. If you notice there, it just jerked a little bit, and I now have control of it. And just to prove it, I'm going to exit out of this one. I'm going to select 514. And if I go right now to my locomotive on the base here, loco again to get it in position, I'll throttle up. This thing is old. As you see, it works. Now again, this locomotive hasn't run. It's been sitting in the box. As you can see, it does, in fact, now respond to those addresses, and it is functional. It will take a little while for this thing to actually get out of its slumber because it has been sitting in storage for who knows how long. And that's essentially all you have to do if you run into this problem. Again, this tactic will work with an engine that is equipped with sound, which requires more voltage. It'll get you around that problem by simply going to blast mode. Uh, older decoders like this, basically all you have to do is engage that mode. I have to give this thing some more exercise, but as you can see, it clearly is working. And the headlights do work. Hard to spot it, but they are working. So I now have this thing functioning. So, now that we have this locomotive working, and I now want to get back to running my layout, I now need to open that switch, pardon me. So to do that, we do the same procedure. We hit program again. I'm going to go into switch mode, which is right over here. And now it comes right back to the option I changed because the system is smart enough to return to it. All I do now is go to T, which is the opposite of closed, which will open the switch. Don't ask me why they call it T for open, but that's how it works. And then I hit exit. To prove again that I've done it, it gives the CS command, which means it's, it's activating the action. And now the unit is back to normal. And that's basically going to conclude this little tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you really enjoyed it. And as always, keep the metal side down. Meantime, I got some N-scale model railroading to do.